Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I call Power and Sample Size in R. And here we're going to calculate sample size for hotelings uh, T squared test uh, comparing uh, multivariate mean vectors. Now, this, I'm going to flash an article here. And this is an article that sample size for comparing means of two multivariate populations. That's by Speckman, Anderson, and Hewitt in 1987. Okay, I'm going to follow this paper in describing this uh, video. And I think what they do is so genius that I think it's worth taking the time to understand what they did. So here the uh, null vector is, is our mean vector equal to some constant vector? Or is our mean vector not equal to that? And then we're going to call delta this shift, right? If these, under the null hypothesis, if these two are equal, then we get the zero vector, right? If they're not, then we get some sort of shift. And that shift we call delta. Now the test statistic uh, follows very closely to the one-dimensional case, the student's t-squared test. But these are all vectors. So that's a vector, this is a vector, this is a matrix. And it looks like this. Uh, it's called Hotelling's t-squared. And he showed that a multiple times this t-squared follows an f distribution. And so we use this distributional property to pick a constant, which we call uh, c0. You know, it's the critical region under the null hypothesis. And if our test statistic is bigger than that, we reject. If it's not, we do not reject. But we pick this value that makes it alpha. <laughs> now, to calculate power and sample size, we have to assume that the null hypothesis is true. So that means our delta is not going to be zero. It's going to have some shift. So we assume it's true, and then the power is the probability of our test statistic, which is this piece right here, is greater than that critical value, C0. And so it's the probability of being greater than that. But where F, now since we're under the alternative hypothesis, F is distributed with the non-central F distribution, numerator, degrees of freedom K, denominator, degrees of freedom n minus k, and then this is the non-centrality parameter, which we call lambda. Now, to calculate power and sample size, um, since both delta and sigma are unknown and must be estimated. Now, this is the covariance matrix. So down the diagonal are the variances, and off, di off diagonals are the covariances. But we can assume without loss of generality that each component has a variance of one. And I have a video called, uh, when calculating sample size, why can we assume without loss of generality that the population variances are equal to one? And, it, and that's worth going uh, and watching why we can assume that. So thus, sigma is a correlation matrix, right? So if all the variances are one down the diagonal, that means the off diagonals are the correlations. So this ends up being a correlation. Now it's often easier to us estimate delta. You know, investigators or statisticians, they usually have a rough idea of the shift in the mean vector that they want to detect. But knowing or, or coming up with an estimate of the whole covariance matrix is much tougher. And that's the genius of this paper that I'm getting ready to, to tell you about, is that they only use the maximum pairwise correlation. And they use that to calculate the uh, sample size. They don't need the whole correlation matrix. And the key concept is this. It's the power function is monotonic increasing in lambda. So for a fixed alpha, numerator, denominator, degrees of freedom, if we let lambda star be strictly less than lambda, and this lambda is chosen because this is the non-centrality parameter for this test. And F star is distributed with a non-central F distribution with this lambda. Now the numerator and denominator degrees of freedom are the same. 
then the power function for this f is less than the power function for the the hotel is t squared test and so what we do is to calculate this power we need to know this covariance matrix which can be tough to know sometimes but if we can pick a smart lambda star that's easy to estimate and we calculate power using it then it's guaranteed that we have the correct power for the original test okay and so this key concept about the monoticity of the power function uh, I point you to theory and application of linear models by Grable okay so there's two cases here one when we know the covariance matrix and that's this one so we fix alpha we fix power we estimate delta and in the covariance matrix sigma we increment one until we achieve the power that is desired and this is where you know f is from a non-central f distribution and this test will be illustrated in the next video using r and i'll uh, i'll have the program code in the comments now this one is we're in the same setting the same hypothesis test but we're going to calculate the sample size a little bit differently so this is the original lambda up here right and Speckman showed that this is is less than this which we're going to call lambda star now they contain the same information except for this sigma is replaced with rho and, and k which is the dimensions of the vector the you know the mean vector so if sigma can be thought of as rho ij where i's down the diagonal and the off diagonals are between minus one and one and we let rho be the maximum absolute value of the pairwise correlations and then this is much easier to estimate so we let f star be a non-central f distribution with this non-centrality parameter we increment one until this achieves the power that we want but the beauty is we only use the maximum absolute value of the pairwise correlation, not the whole covariance matrix. Now, a proof of this right here, I have a video out that I call eigenvalue inequality for a correlation matrix, where we prove, we don't prove it, I show how Speckman proved this, and then I also add in another little twist into this video. Now, as a quick example, let's say we want to test the mean uh, the mean vector is some constant vector or not equal to that constant vector. We said alpha equal 0.05, power 0.8. Let's say we have a three-dimensional vector. Um, the, the shift, the delta that we want to detect is 0 0.6, 1.2, and, and 1. And I came up with these numbers because that's the, exam the numbers that Speckman used, except for they used 1.6, 1 1.2, 1 and 1. I just like 0.6 better because it makes these the sample size larger. So if this were the true correlation matrix, that would make the maximum pairwise correlation 0.6. But so if we use an estimate of this or the true covariance matrix, we would need a sample size of 11 for this to have a 80% uh, power. Now, if we only use the maximum correlation 0.6 in this calculation, we need 14 you know it, the, the algorithm generates 14 which is more than 11 so it ensures that the true test has adequate power but this is a much simpler test to calculate okay well that's all I have for this video in part two which it will hopefully come out either tonight or tomorrow is going to illustrate these uh, sample size calculations using R uh, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.